Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. All right, let's do the business of sports. Brought to you by Security Financial Bank. We got a couple uh, topics we're, we're going to hit up here. First off, we got a new owner uh, for the Baltimore Orioles. All right, so uh, is it uh, John Angelos, mm-hmm. uh, the former owner? I guess now is what if it gets approved. Soon to be former. <laughs> yeah, uh, has agreed to sell the Orioles uh, to a group led by the. Carlisle Group Incorporated. Uh, sounds like David Rubenstein is going to be the co-founder of that group, and he will be uh, he will take over as the team's controlling owner. Now, originally, this uh, when the Angelos family has been in control for the Orioles since 1993, when uh, Peter Angelos purchased the team for a cool 173 million dollars. So not a bad investment when he's able to uh, sell it for $1.725 million. Now, I know the dollar isn't the same as it was uh, back then. But the Orioles, I'm curious, you would know this a little bit more than than me, Lucas, here. So, you know, the Orioles, I think, has been a team for a lot of fans. They don't spend a whole lot. No. And and player-wise. Nope. Do you think this changes a little bit? Yes. um, That has been one of the ongoing knocks. Um, It it regularly comes up on the Baseball Tonight podcast constantly on how the Orioles don't have – I might get the the stat a little wrong, but, like, they don't have anyone under long-term contract beyond, like, this season. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, like – and you got Jackson Holiday coming up, top yeah. prospect out there. Yeah, so. or, or something like that. Because obviously you got, yeah, Abby Or Justin Rutschman, Holiday. Yeah. Go, yeah. Or Jackson Holiday. Jackson Holiday. Yeah, Jackson Holiday. We got two Jacksons Jackson Cheerio and Jackson Holiday. I know. We got all the Jacksons are coming up now. Mm-hmm. It's like all the Jalen's in basketball. Like, I'm trying, who, which one is which? Uh, now we got all the Jacksons in, bas- in baseball. Um, I'm referring to, like, you know, there's also Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rutschman. They're like, they're not going to be gone after next year. But they were not spending. Down the road, they weren't. They didn't make a lot of acquisitions during the off season last year. They seem to be turning into the next on the cheap team. Plus, Jen Angelos did. You remember the whole Martin Luther King thing yes. from a year ago? Yeah. Like, yeah, and then it turns into, I'll show you the books. Come right on up. I'm a total open book. And then it's like, no, actually, no, I'm not going to show you the books. Cool. Um, I think the Angelos family didn't have that much capital. Mm-hmm. Overall, because Peter Angelos, I believe, has dementia, I want to say, or is it something where he can't run it day to day? So John and Angelos took it over from him, his son. I think it's a combination of not having the equity and they were looking to, to sell. So I know there were the rumors about, oh, they could move to Nashville. And I, they, realistically, that was never going to happen. Um, but they were looking to find someone else to take over the team. They can cash out. The one of these guys is from Baltimore. The mm-hmm. uh, Rubenstein is from Baltimore. Yep. So, yes, they're going to spend more money. Baltimore's not a big market, but they're on they're they're in the corridor, right? Um, and you kind of have to in that division. Let's be real, yeah. yeah. Uh, unless you're Tampa Bay Rays, I guess too. But and then you know. and if you're Tampa Bay, you're smart enough you can figure out ways to do it. Mm-hmm. The other four should be able to compete. Baltimore is clearly fourth of the fifth in terms of market size, but again, you you've got a potentially Super strong fan base. Um, got one of the most vaunted stadiums in the league. Even if by modern standards, it probably does need some renovation. I mean, you could you could make a hot take and say, "Ooh, they need to replace Camden Yards." Well, they're not going to replace Camden Yards, but you could do more to that place. You could find ways to find more revenue. Fine. Um, might be one of the few places, kind of like Lambeau Field, where you could maybe give it a half corporate name, but don't take away Camden Yards because you're yeah. going to not call it Camden Yards. Um, they will. Be, that, and that upcoming talent is so good. The Orioles should be able to win multiple division titles and be a World Series contender for the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. They should be. Yep. If they spend the money properly, um, they're, they're going to be in better shape with the, with these two new owners. Uh, I was reading a little bit here from uh, the mothership, ESPN.com, the last paragraph, and they're right up here. It says, even as the team posted the best record in the AL last year, there were uh, signs on uh, potential team spending, omnia signs about uh, potential team spending, such as a New York Times piece in which Angelos was quoted as saying, when people talk about giving this player $200 million, that player $150 million, we would be so financially underwater that you'd have to raise the prices massively. Holy bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's so 
that Angelo story, ooh, that interview, mm-hmm. oh boy, um, he was he was really shaping up to be the second most disliked owner, besides across baseball in in total, I should say, besides John Fisher, who is like number one with a bullet. And again, I'll try to come up with some more chart references just to, to, to describe Fisher's status. But apparently, Angelo's actually is somewhat, somewhat well liked in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. The Angelo's family, I should say. Maybe I don't know about John per, in particular. Um, and he's the Oakland A's owner, John if anybody Fisher's doesn't the, know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow. What there, I see there's a rumor now that there, I mean, again, this is a rumor emphasis on that. That if the A's can't find a stadium to go to, maybe they just disband for a couple years. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Again, rumor, rumor, rumor. But the mere fact that we're discussing, eh, I could just drop down to 29 teams for a few years while the A's figure themselves out. Uh, really? <laughs> that, uh, that speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Um, the Orioles will be in better shape as a result of this. It, I'm sure the Angelos family will be in better shape. But for baseball's sake... I, this is good for the Orioles. I want. I, I don't want to do the whole baseball is better when the Orioles are good thing. I mean, it, it, baseball is better when every team has a, has a shot. But given that the talent, given the talent they have and the potential that they could become, I wouldn't want to see them be like, yeah, well, we're going to become the Tampa Bay Rays without the uh, ability to retool on the fly. That right. would suck. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad for their sake. Uh, also, let's hit up this one as part of our business of sports segment here. So this one uh, kind of dropped this morning. But, uh, again, according to ESPN sources, uh, PJ Tour finalizes a $3 billion deal as their live talks continue. But uh, according to this uh, write-up here, the PJ Tour has finalized an agreement with Strategic Sports Group uh, a group of billionaire sports team owners to infuse at least three billion dollars into a new for-profit entity, PJ Tour Enterprises. Uh, PJ Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan is expected to inform the PJ Tour, PJ Tour champions, and the Corn Ferry Tour members of the deal in a conference call later this morning. Um, also on here, it said that uh, ESPN reported on December fifteenth that a deal with strategic sports group was imminent this group includes owners like john henry and tom warner from the boston red sox arthur blank from the atlanta falcons uh steve cohen from the mets tom ricketts from the cubs and yes milwaukee brewers owner mark adonacio uh strategic sports group would be a minority investor in the pga tour enterprises and the pga tour would remain the majority shareholder Meanwhile, the PJ Tour is continuing its negotiations to finalize an agreement with the Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund and the DP World Tour, which would potentially inject additional billions of dollars into PJ Tour Enterprises. So, there you have it. Well, okay, now here's the charitable explanation for Adonacio, and maybe this is actually what he's thinking. This is where there could be upset for the brewers. So, he invests in this. It, the, this really starts to grab in more money as the game of golf expands further and around the globe and all the the classic untapped markets. But they're out there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of places where golf could could succeed. What well, was it? Was it Rory McIlroy or who was was it was saying like two ish weeks ago was talking about like we could totally be playing in like Japan or India. Yeah, I think or, it was Rory. Yeah, yeah which. I stopped and went, yeah, that's right. Like, all the golf, basically everything big in golf is the United States, the British Isles, and by the British Isles, it it's pretty much is the island of Great Britain, um, and maybe the occasional, like, Saudi Arabian located, but, the, like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, why aren't we playing in the Philippines? I mean, you could, be, you could give explanations for certain places, but there's so many other places to go. Why are we not playing in... Brazil, I, I just throwing out. Oh, there's so many places to grow, so that investment gets more valuable, more valuable, more valuable. And what if Adonacio cashed out more money? And uh, don't wait like 15, 20 years, obviously. But what if this isn't, this isn't like three years or so? He has a lot more money to spend on the Brewers. I would hope he would then invest it in the Brewers. That's that's the positive. Mm-hmm. I hope that that's what happens. Now maybe he's just being a businessman, like, hey, this is an opportunity. I'm doing it. 
Right. It has nothing to do with Milwaukee. That's probably what's going on. That's what happens all the time. Okay, fine. But I'd like to believe that it's the other one. Yeah, we really don't know, right? Mm-hmm. We really don't know. So if anybody's like, so what's PJ Tour Enterprise? This is, again, kind of all goes to this whole live agreement merger, hopefully, thing that happens, right? right? You're trying to trying to what put more money into the tour for these tournaments and for these players to keep these players in the tournament in the tour. Excuse me. That's that's the basis of this whole thing, right? It's it's right. it's this group is giving them money to invest in and hopefully keep their talent and, you know, kind of expand the game of golf, if you will. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it's about. Because remember when the whole thing, a couple of years ago when this whole thing came down, like PJ Tour's a nonprofit? Remember that whole thing? <laughs> yeah. Um, but now it's like, okay, yeah, but. So essentially what it's doing is just putting in more money for, for the golfers to potentially capture and and make it more appealing for golfers in the PGA. Well, and if that gets if that drives more engagement, more ratings, more ticket sales, et cetera, et cetera, and again, start getting other locations, uh, that's where the money gets that where the value goes up. Mm-hmm. That's where it becomes a smarter business ploy, and that's where maybe these guys can then use it in other aspects of their life, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the PGA Tour Enterprise is the the for profit entity. That was created to house the tour's commercial interests. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. Yeah. Do you, think golf, do you think golf is going to be in in a better spot ten years from now? Define better spot. Yeah, I, know, I know that's a nebulous thing, but like the overall, like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll ask the question this way. But this, this, your answer could potentially go on a long ways. But what is golf? Ten years from now, I, th- I mean, for a lot of people, it's the Masters and the other majors, and then most, and a lot of casual fans check out after that. Yeah, um, is it to the point where it's more organized, where we, it's more like the NBA or the NFL? This whole PGA Live thing turns into something more? in-season tournaments. Oh gosh, <laughs> wow! Um, but what do you think it is in in a decade? Honestly, I feel like it's going to be the same. I don't know if it's going to – what I mean by the same, like I, you mentioned the four majors. I feel like it's going to be like kind of like the, the way it is right now. We're going to – they're piping master stuff already. Mm-hmm. You've noticed that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been piping master stuff since uh, December, I think. I mean, that thing, that's, that is golf. And then, you know, PGA Championship, I think, has taken a little bit of a hit because they moved it up in May. U.S. Open still, you know, it's there too. Then you got the Open. Uh, which I, I feel like gets a little bit more attention when it's like, like you know the ancient course or the you know those type of courses the old course the old course thank mm-hmm. you um, I don't in terms of like attention in that to me golf is so dependent on the talent that is in there like if they don't have another quote tiger you know can they take their game to the next level in exposure I don't I don't know. I don't know if they can. They got great talent. I would argue this is probably the most. If I if I'm encompassing live and PGA, I'm not separating the both. Just looking at golf overall, I think they've got great talent across the board. But do they have somebody that still moves the needle like a like a Tiger Woods can? And I don't think they do. It's just like a, it, this might be the classic tortured analogy, but is this akin to NBA in the aughts? Lots of talent, maybe more talent than the prior decade, but there's not Michael Jordan. Yeah, and thus the league, kind that the league kind of suffered. Now there was all, there are other issues of like the quality of the play, defense was taking over too much, um, but they don't have that one thing that is so bright. And yes, I know Kobe was still, but but still, if, if we remember in real time, Kobe Bryant was not no. Michael Jordan in the aughts for a lot of that time. Far right. from it. Um, is that I, I wonder if that's kind of like this right now? Lots and lots of talent. My gosh, such talented golfers! But so, what is it? What is it going to have to take to get that golfer? It's not necessarily a young prodigy that just comes up through the rankings, is it? I, I think it's going to be something different. Kind of like, okay. If we're if we're uh, to use another analogy, the Brady versus Mahomes thing of like who's the next Tom Brady? Well, Patrick Mahomes comes up kind of mm-hmm. di- different. I mean. He was, Way way higher t- touted quarterback. Um, he plays the game differently, but he's setting himself up 
and we are setting him up mm-hmm. as sports media to be the next Tom Brady. That that case can now start to be made. Um I don't think you can go with the phenom who's on talent shows when he's three and right. you know, all of that, like the Tiger Woods story. No. I think it's going to, like... Not in this day and age in 2023, 24. No. Like, where are they going to start on America's Got Talent? Right. I mean, but... I mean, you go to YouTube and you could probably find a six-year-old who's just crushing a golf ball right now. Right. So. And then those don't usually turn into something. It, it's probably something more like... I'm going to go with this name. Like a Bryson DeChambeau. In terms of someone where, oh my gosh, what is he doing? Whoa. And and starts to, something that breaks beyond golf fans where casual fans know who this person is. And then they start winning. Like, do they go on a winning streak of like, they've won seven majors in a row. Can they pull off a double grand slam? All of that comes together. And maybe that's what it's going to take. Somebody to complete the grand slam in the first year. Mm -hmm. You know, Tiger had his Tiger Slam. Who also has personality. Right. Here's where we can but also, count in all, but also that. just dominating the field. Yes, like just like it's not it, you're winning by twelve strokes or something like that. Just pure dominate, and you had courses tiger proofing courses. You know, is that even possible to to take that to the next level? Who would be the Mike Trout of golf? In that someone who is well known, clearly a big star, but if they were to pull off like a year long Grand Slam. S- still somehow it would be like the seventh line on ESPN.com's headlines. Would it be Rory? No, Rory would be no. Think, you think it would be Rory? You no. Know, uh, he's, he, he's, Spieth? He, maybe. I was wondering if maybe him. So Like so mild-mattered and still somewhat anonymous. Even well, Spieth, though really Spieth can have a mouth on him. Yeah. If you catch the mics when he's on the course. Yeah. You want to talk mild matter? That'd be Rom, kind of a quiet Probably. or Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler. I wonder if Scheffler, as much as people like him, maybe it's Scheffler because I, I, Rom has. I think Rom seems like he could become larger than life. Mm-hmm. And he's a pretty big dude anyway. I'm like he literally kind of is, but figuratively, I think he could be. Um, man, may, maybe it would be Scheffler. If Scheffler won all four this year, for example, I don't know that that really does that like p- big time sports world may not put that in the proper context mm-hmm. yeah we might miss it which would be a shame but that's probably what happens mm-hmm. now if bryson does it um i also think you, if you got that golfer it's got to be the the golfer that you know he's got a good marketing group behind him right got got your own logo you know got your own uh you know, you're you're going to a store and your your photos are all over the place. You may not know who, but what he actually is as a golfer, he or she. But you know, it's like, oh, that's cool. Who do you like? Think- I keep saying when when I was a kid, Tiger made it cool. Who does the best job of? I mean, no one's Tiger right now, but who does the best job of that right now in golf? Yeah, Netflix with full swing. <laughs> <laughs> Sad to say, it's a streaming platform, not a golfer. Right, but um, you know that it, it was a hit. It no. was it was a major hit. Mm-hmm. Phil tried doing it with his thing, and that just didn't work. No. That didn't work over there. Yeah, because, again, the names that are popping right now, Bryson DeChambeau. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rory. Rory. Uh, again, you don't, you don't have to say McElroy. It's Rory. Mm-hmm. I, I I think it might be Rory McElroy. He he tends to get most of the headlines now anyway, too. And But we're just waiting for him now to like start winning again because it feels like it's been forever. Yes. You know, consistently. Yes. And- I Actually, now that I think about it, I think Rory McIlroy doing the Grand Slam this year might be one of the best things to happen to golf. Mm-hmm. So many people do seem to want to root for him. Especially since he's been so vocal about Liv. He's been kind of that spearhead of the PGA Tour, yes. right? He's even been with, that guy. Even with him pulling off a lot, like it seems mm-hmm. like anytime he says something now that's not hardcore, it's like, oh, now Rory, like, the whole, like, not amnesty, but like, we shouldn't be penalizing, like, hmm, someone going to live anytime? I don't know, he's going to do that. But nevertheless, he is considered golf's good guy right now. Whether that's accurate, mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but that's, that's the role he plays right now. Yeah. He's the opposite of Phil Mickelson, mm-hmm. to be blunt. Yeah, I agree. All right, that is our Business of Sports segment, again, brought to you by Security Financial Bank. Check out our next topic for Business of Sports every Wednesday morning 
live on the radio show, the Dan Casper Show at 8.05 or on the Man Cave Podcast.